As most of you know, autumn is my favorite season. The colors and the crisp air seem so inviting to me and so rich with potential. It's a season of change and it never fails to disappoint. Yet it always seems to pass so quickly and before you know it, winter is upon us. So before the season completely disappears, I decided to capture just a hint of its beauty in a painting of a simple autumn leaf. And today I will be teaching you guys how to paint one for yourself as well. Step number one, find a leaf. Step number one is pretty simple. Just go outside and grab yourself the most colorful leaf you can find. Oh, and here's a misfit morsel for you today. Choose leaves that have some defects on them. By choosing a leaf with defects, such as burn marks or tattered areas of your leaf, you're going to add a touch of character and even a little bit of a background story to your leaf, which is gonna enhance the realism of your painting. Step number two, trace and ink. There's no need to stress over drawing these beauties. Most leaves are the perfect size to simply trace onto your paper. Once you have a shape that you are happy with, add your leaf stem and veins as well as any other imperfections such as holes, torn edges, and even decaying marks. Once I was done with my pencil sketch, I used a 005 micron pen to ink my pencil lines. However, if you're wanting a more traditional watercolor look, just skip this step. Here's a quick question for you before we start painting. What is your favorite type of leaf in autumn color? Mine is the Japanese maple. We used to have them near my parents' house. They turn a beautiful orange and then red in the fall. Once you're finished with step number two, we can go on to step number three, preparing your base colors. Remember that watercolor is all about layering, so choosing the right colors is crucial for this type of painting. My palette will include PH Martin's Violet, True Blue, Burnt Orange, Orange, Lemon Yellow, Green Grass, and Scarlet. I also use Camion Yellow from Windsor and Newton. Here's another misfit morsel for you today. When painting autumn leaves, I've found having a larger palette of colors helps me achieve a greater amount of realism. The reason is because of color theory, which I'll explain a little bit more later. On a side note, I only use three brushes for this project. However, you're going to see five here. That's because I like to keep these five trusty brushes handy and available near me. I use three round brushes of varying sizes as well as two liner brushes. Also, here's a trade secret for you. The reason why I keep these five brushes close by me is that if a color appears too dark on my paper or gets a little out of control, I simply pick up one of these dry brushes and dab onto the paper where that paint is just slightly off and it will soak up the paint like a sponge into that brush. So that's a little tidbit for you. Step number four, paint your layers. I first began by wetting with a clean, large round brush my paper where I desired to place my first layer of color. After the paper was wet, I then dabbed my lightest color, that would be lemon yellow, in the location where I desired it to go. Since my paper is wet, the color will flow freely out, creating a smooth gradient. 
This is the key to painting autumn leaves. You must work quickly and precisely while the paper is wet. Otherwise, your paint will either create a rough, jagged line on your paper, or it can become muddy from applying too many colors at one time. The next color layer I added to my leaf was cadmium yellow, which is a rich, deeper yellow than the first. I placed this color near areas which would eventually become orange or areas where my yellow may have a shadow. My next color layer was orange, which I placed in the remaining white areas of my leaf. Next, I dabbed burnt orange in a specific darker location over already wet orange and allowed the two colors to mingle together on the paper. Finally, I mixed scarlet red and a touch of green grass together to create a slightly toned down red. This is where my color theory came in handy. On the color wheel, green is opposite red. By mixing these two colors together, I can get a decaying brown color that looks very realistic. I can also use this color to tone down colors on my leaf that are too vibrant. Step number five, finishing touches. The last step will make our leaf change dramatically. We are purposely going to be muddying the beautiful colors we have just laid down. This will create depth and character to our leaf, making it appear more realistic. By mixing orange, lemon yellow, and a hint of scarlet and true blue on your palette, you will produce a deeper decaying brown color. Your paper should still be somewhat wet. With this new color, slightly dab with your liner brush small areas and allow the color to balloon outward. Keep adding brown until you feel happy about the turnout. I didn't want to go too far with the decay on my leaf because that was just my personal opinion as an artist, but it's completely up to you how detailed you actually wish to go. The last step is to mix up a tad bit of violet a very, very small amount into your already brown mixture. And then add this to your leaf's stem and veins. And that's it. A simple and easy way to paint a realistic autumn leaf. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.